everyone. This is Diane Jones-Allen. Welcome to Under Color, an annual podcast sponsored by the College of Architecture Planning and Public Affairs at the University of Texas in Arlington. It is where we talk to academics and practitioners who are working in vulnerable communities. Today, I'm extremely excited because I have Emily Nwakuda, a uh, professor in the college, to talk to us about her work. Well, Emily, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, first, thank you for having me. Uh, so, uh, I'm an assistant professor in uh, the Department of Public Affairs and Planning in CAPA. Uh, so, my work has three buckets. So, one of the first buckets is philanthropy and nonprofits, trying to understand the impact uh, through philanthropy and the work of nonprofits. Uh, second, I have some community development work that I do where, um, especially with the arts, trying to understand um, access to cultural districts and uh, hopefully I can tell you a little bit more about that work in particular. And then third, I think of um, the most vulnerable and I conceptualize that as the unsheltered, um, those who are most in need in our communities. And so, yeah, uh, happy to be here. Those are my three buckets of research and naturally I teach, so I do hope my students uh, see this. <laughs> Great. Uh, I'm excited to hear um, more about your work. I want to ask you, does your work involve communities that are under social, cultural, and environmental threats? Mm -hmm. And can you describe what, what kind of work that is? Sure. Um, so the first thing that comes to mind when it comes to social and cultural threats is my work with um, the local Arlington um, Cultural District. Um, the cultural district has a lot of big promises and a lot of big potentials that surround it. So first off, the cultural district is where we um, really concentrate the arts in a particular community, especially in urban communities. So this is where you will find your theaters, your um, various art venues and galleries, even the library, and, and as well as governmental agencies and nonprofits. Um, so it's interesting, there's a lot of overlap typically call that mixed income. And so it's good to have mixed incomes, but it's also tricky to um, equally distribute or show the culture of the various groups that are involved in the cultural districts. And so I've recently, in the last year or two, been doing some surveys to understand utilization of the cultural district, especially when it comes to free shows, um, musical performances, to think through how best we can really involve the community and activate the the space that is given for the cultural district, but it's hard to know whose culture is best displayed um, when we don't hear the voices of everyone. So the surveys that I've been doing, as well as some of the interview work that I will be doing, um, tries to really communicate um, those social and cultural threats or barriers that are keeping people less engaged in the cultural district, uh, which is supposed to, uh, supposed to serve the whole community. Do um, these communities that you work with, do they um, suffer from any um, environmental justice issues? So that is an interesting question. A lot of that predates my time, but um, the surrounding area of the cultural district was redesigned. So um, where roads were placed, where roads were expanded, and who lost land, and who gained land, and um, where the parks um, were placed. Um, I do understand that it was a bit controversial of you know what will stay, what will go. Um, certain cultural artifacts were brought in and some were removed. And so that creates a dynamic of um, various issues of power as well as representation. And so I do try to explore that in my work because um, all of my surveys are um, not just closed-ended questions. I prefer open-ended because that's my opportunity to speak with the community and allow them to say things in their own words. So myself and my students, we do a lot of drilling down into the comments and we do indeed get a lot of comments about how the cultural district should be used and engaged and how to activate the various parts of the community, especially um, I'm particularly interested in the central Arlington. Okay, so did I hear you say that you were interested also in housing or settlements? Yes. So, Could you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so that work has been a little bit broader than the local community, more so trying to understand um, how the continuums of care, and these are the agencies that um, 
we are essentially engaging to provide homeless services, how they are indeed um, doing their work and how best they can do their work and best practices. And so in regards to that work, um, I've looked a little bit beyond the local community of Arlington and where we are and tried to look more so at a national scale with some co-authors to try to understand um, when someone presents as homeless, are there racial and social inequities to their treatment? And if so, um, what are some of the practices that are happening within these organizations that we could potentially correct so that the clients um, Potential, uh, potential clients who are essentially just community members who are in need can get the best service possible. And so this leads into the idea of affordable housing because since we're looking in various communities, we know that um, we have a lot of urban context in that particular vein of research, and we also know um, that affordability is um, systemic in, in America, so we really um, are trying to touch that in a little bit of a more of a tangential way where we know there complex mechanisms controlling affordable housing, but we at least want to make sure that when individuals present for services that they um, are treated fairly as possible. And so we try to pick up in that research um, instances in which there might be racial or social inequities. I really like, though, that you are working in Arlington because often Arlington, you know, on the surface, looks like, you know, everything is perfect and no housing issues and no cultural conflicts, you know. So it's really great that you're kind of uncovering you know, these things. So the last question I wanted to ask you is if you could talk a little bit about um, any techniques or how you work or how one could work to empower these communities, maybe in both these situations, dealing with cultural districts and, districts and housing, how you could, could empower them to um, come up with their own solutions so that these things can be Sustainable. My work has more so been working through the stakeholders that directly serve the community members. And so making sure that these stakeholders have what they need, whether that be resources or um, just unanswered questions that these stakeholders may have. Those stakeholders in particular tend to be nonprofits. And so the, how I got engaged in the Arlington work. I literally reached out to lots of nonprofits to try to understand what questions do they have um, about the community or the community needs that myself and my students can help answer. And hence, the, um, for example, the cultural district came up because there was an issue of disconnect. We know that we have some generational divide. We happen to be at a large urban um, college, but then um, we have a, a downtown cultural district right next to us and the students are not necessarily and the students um, are an eclectic group themselves, and we can't assume that all students are uh, traditional students, and we can't assume all students are wealthy. We just want to make sure that there is full access to the cultural district that is there to serve the public. And from that work, we grew to, to try to survey the whole community. Um, again, just trying to get their um, thoughts, let them express those thoughts. Um, people are welcome to email, but they can also call if they need to to express those thoughts. And then we work with the nonprofit to say, hey, how can we adjust these? Um, because we're hearing certain things from community um, members. Um, in regards to housing, again, working with nonprofits to understand best practices of what it is their clients need and how they are typically engaging for those services so we can identify the practices that may ultimately be resulting in some exclusion um, and not as much as an inclusion as we prefer. That's really great because um, you, know, you have to engage the community right, to, you know, so that these solutions kind of come from them. So um, one additional question is, so how do you bring this into your teaching? Oh, wow. <laughs> you know why students bring this into your teaching? Because, you know, students are learning, yes, you know, of course, guidelines or course outcomes you have to meet so how do you bring this into teaching? Absolutely. Uh, most recently I've um, been trying to grow my teaching pedagogy as they say um, to really include service learning. Um, I have these connections with nonprofits and then the students um, don't always have the opportunity to have such a direct link to nonprofits who are actually uh, providing the services that community members need. Um, so I've been working with nonprofits to 
answer questions that are of interest to them, that are not time sensitive, by the way, because we don't want to disrupt their work, but are meaningful questions. And so that way we can design a research project that will um, answer that question, but use methods that are exposing the students to new methods, as well as giving them the context of how to work with the community. Um, so that has been my most recent way of engaging with students with my research is through service learning. So they get to meet the stakeholders, they get to ask them questions, they get to clarify, they get to visit the sites, and um, every now and then meet a community member. Um, so ideally, I'm a little bit more tangential, but we are drilling down. We're just at the beginning phases. And so um, ideally, our work is going to be um, presented publicly um, later in this semester, hopefully. <laughs> so that we can invite the community to see, to see the work, but also to um, get more feedback and kind of um, help leaders think through what are some applicable solutions that can address the needs that present. That's great. I mean, that's, you know, one of the things that really empowers the college when we as professors, you know, get the community to engage with us. That's really wonderful. Thanks for sharing oh, your course. work. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And I hope everyone comes back for our next episode when we'll talk to another great faculty member. <laughs>